hello to you guys and a very warm welcome back to another video here on the channel and in today's video we are going to be looking at how to set up a simple slope stability analysis in GeoStudio and just before we do get on with the video I want to take a few minutes here and just say a few things first I want to check with you guys that you're all doing good you're all doing okay with everything that's going on out there in the world today I hope you're all staying safe and I just want to say if you need someone to talk to you can always leave a message in the comment section there is a lot of people out there who are willing to talk to you and in your own personal time just call on your friends talk to them check on them see how they are doing because these are very difficult times and you may never know who will need your support and finally I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for the support you've showed me so far I was really, really, really impressed by all of your words of encouragement, all the support I got from you guys for that first video. Thank you very much. It, it means a lot to know that so many people out there believe in what we are trying to achieve here. So a big thank you to you. Now, if we look at what we have to do today, this is, um, if you open GeoStudio, this right here, this is the first screen you come to. And if you've run previous analysis, it's all going to show up here where you can just click on one and open it. But if you haven't, you have to create a new analysis by coming under the new tab. And in this case, we are doing a slope W analysis. So you click on slope W. And you can set your analysis features. I think the most important one we want to change here is the pore water pressure conditions. We want to have pore water pressure, so we can put it in as a piezometric line, which allows you to just put in your water table and then the software will calculate the pressure of water depending on your water table location. Uh, the analysis type, this Morgenstern price is good enough for most common analysis. But if you have special cases where you want to use the Spencer method or Bishop Simplified, any of them you can use. But we can keep Morgenstern price for now. Geometry, keep it as default. At the slip surface, you can define left to right if your slope is failing to the right or right to left if it's failing to the left. And then all of these ways of defining your slip surface. In our case, we don't know where the failure surface is. So the best option is to use the enter and exit where you only define where the slope is going to, you know, crack open at the top and then where it's going to daylight at the bottom of your slope and then allow the software to find the slip surface. Don't worry, you see it when we get to our definition window. So I think this is good enough. We can keep all of our defaults and then close this out. Oh, also, if you want, you can write a description of your project or something in here so that if someone later comes to look at this um, analysis, they will understand what's going on. OK, so you can close this out. And then normally what I like to do is as soon as I have this window, I save the file and then I can just Work from there so click file and then save let's see what do we call it let's call it uh slope tutorial right and then just hit save all right so now we are ready to draw our slope and that's the first thing you do you just draw your geometry of the slope and the way I like to do it is by defining points, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, so if you come up here to the define, you click on that all the way down to points. And what this window allows you to do is to define specific points along your slope, which you can then connect with a straight line to just draw your geometry. So you can come to add point. And then down here, you put in the X coordinate first and then the Y coordinate. So if we start at the origin, zero, 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 enter, zero, enter. That's the point pops up right here. And then you can 
follow the same procedure enter the rest of your points but i'm not going to show all of the points here in the tutorial so uh stop right here enter the rest of the points and i will pick it up again okay welcome back now we have all of our points defined and we can start drawing the regions if you come up here to draw and regions you can click on this and start drawing the regions or if you see over here it's the same symbol so you can click on that and again start drawing your regions and so you just connect the points that's the advantage of having defined all your points before you start drawing the regions makes it so much easier and in this tutorial i'm doing a simple two layer slope where possibly this one up here is um an embankment you are placing an embankment field to maybe build a road on top of it and this down here is your natural ground with some ditch over here that may be filled with water okay so now you've drawn your regions you can close this out and uh, at this point save your work so you don't lose it and have to you know go all over it now the next thing we want to do is to tell the software what material is in each of these layers so you come to define materials and um, i already defined two materials in here but let me just show you what you would do if you come here and you want to add a material you click on the add and then you give the material a name so say this is demo then you can change the color of the material to whatever color you want and down here is where you put in the material properties so most common is the more column uh, model where you give it a certain unit weight let's say 19 and uh, no cohesion you give it a fee angle of say 30 right that's your material defined so that's how i define these two materials up here which i'm going to use so you close this out and then now come to draw materials or again the same symbol right here so you can click on draw material straight away and then here it says assign so the first one is our fill material and then you click on the down arrow to select silty sand for the natural ground now if i let's say by mistake i selected this as demo and i wanted to remove it i could just come to remove instead of assign i'll select remove and then click on this and it gets removed that's pretty useful i think okay so now we have our materials defined the next thing is to tell the software where your water table is and to add the power tap table or the groundwater table location you come up here to define and then all the way down to pour water pressure it says piezometric line because that's what uh, we selected and again i already added in one point okay but it doesn't have values so you'd click on add and then down here the location of your water table mine is at uh, six meters below the ground so at x location of zero the water table is at minus six and then at uh, x location of 60 the water table is at minus six again and the software draws your water table location for you so you can go ahead and close this out and again save we are almost ready to go the only other thing we need is to define the location of uh, exits and entry points for the failure line. Now on this line up here, or this line up here, we know that the failure surface is going to start somewhere up there and it is going to come down and then 
exit somewhere on this line so we come to um, draw slip surface entry exit and then the reason i use draw is because i don't want to have to be entering these points manually but if you know the points you can use define and then enter the points but i like to use draw for this one and then just somewhere up here let's say maybe from here up to there that's where your entry point is you don't need to do anything the software recognizes that what you draw to the left side because you define left to right it recognizes the one on the left as the entry point and the one on the right as the exit point so you don't need to do anything just draw them and close this out again hit save so right now our model is ready to run and you come down here click on start and then it runs the analysis and there is your critical failure surface factor of safety of 1.2 which is not too bad it means your slope is, um, is stable right so essentially that's it i don't think there's anything more i need to add you can view um, a lot of information about the you know the color map all kinds of things or you can view multiple slip surfaces. If you select any of these, it tells you, you know, the slip surface, and then it tells you the safety factor. So these are all the um, trial surfaces that the software ran. It picked, tried all of these surfaces, and the one it showed you, that's the one that has the lowest factor of safety. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned something useful. And again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for supporting the channel. Now, before I go, I just want to throw an idea with, um, float an idea by you guys, see what you think. I know most of you who tune in to watch my videos and support me don't actually find use for the information because it's specific to geotechnical engineers. So I was thinking of making videos that might be more useful to you guys and right now i'm thinking of excel tutorials but i like to know what you guys think about it just say something in the comment section or text me or call me let me know what you think if you think it's a good idea i can make a few tutorials in excel that might be more useful to you okay um thank you again for tuning in and stay safe out there